All right. Welcome, Myra, Alex, Charlie, and Raylan. All right, we're going to begin the lesson, everybody. Attention. Ladies and gentlemen, we are beginning. All right. Welcome back, everybody, and I'm glad to be back today with this amazing group, Myra, Alex, and Raylan. I'm, I'm probably just going to grab some stuff in there, though. Okay. <laughs> what? All right, so today we are going to start with a little something we haven't done yet, prayer request, which we did last year. For the, So the people who were here last year were used to doing this at the beginning of each lesson so to le today let's keep logan in prayer as well as israel i don't know how many of you heard about what's going on in israel did anybody hear about what's going on in israel here so basically there's a war that started in israel and so israel is being attacked so we need to keep israel in prayer because it's god's people's land um but there is something we need to realize as all these wars are happening in Mark, it talks about how in the end days there will be wars and rumors of wars. And we can see that in um, Ukraine. Many of you heard of you, what's going on in Ukraine, right? And Israel. So let's keep those places in prayer. Now let's get into prayer. Jesus, thank you for everyone who came here today. Help them to be blessed and help them to get right with you, Lord. Uh, help to heal Logan, that he will be healed and he'll be able to come to peace of and back to school soon. And help the people in Israel protect and guide them. In Jesus' name pray, amen. Alrighty, Raylan, I am going to give you your professional job back. Woo woo! Nobody here is going to take photos and videos. You can take the photos and videos of awesome Myra and awesome me and awesome Raylan over there. I'm watching you. And take photos too, please. Jesus is Vine Way Word. All right, this is one of the series of lessons exploring Jesus' character, who he is, and power, what he does, by exploring his titles and adjectives from A to Z. Titles and adjectives are from the King James Version of the Bible and may be different in other translations. Words are powerful, whether spoken or written. So say I went up to Myra here and said, you're an awful person, you're mean. That would really hurt her, right? She'd be in lots of pain. She'd be hurt by what I told her. But you know what? If I walked up to her and said, you're kind, you're amazing, you're sweet, you're the best person I ever met, that would, she would really like that, right? That would be really kind words that would really touch her. So she'd like that. All right. Okay. Were they spoken or written? They may contain life or death. Did anyone know that words can contain life or death? So we're going to talk about how words today can contain life or death. Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So the words God speaks unto you is life. Isn't that amazing? All right, John six, that's from John 6, 63. Wait, let me get some candy out now. Where to put my candy? Oh, let me get some candy out because this is a candy part. All right, let's get into some questions. What are some examples of speaking life? Anyone? Some ways you can speak life. Like maybe something that brings somebody joy. Complimenting someone. Yeah, like saying, hey, you look pretty today. Hey, or something nice. Anybody else? Oh, sorry. All right. Any Raylan, you got any examples of how you can speak life? No, I'm good. I'll All right. See. What about in ways you might be found guilty of speaking death? Insulting someone. Yeah, insulting <laughs> someone. Anybody else? Just to remind them that they're 
remind you there's an important uh, Christmas holiday play meeting in room 111 right now to talk about casting. Anything you can think of, Raylan? There's a teacher right there, so no. No? Okay. All right, praise. Let's take a moment to speak some positive things to others in the room. And then let's praise God together for the power of his word. All right, anyone want to speak something nice to someone in the room today? Um, you're a very good person for hosting these events every Tuesday. Good job, Alex. All right, Raylan, do you have anything to say nice to anyone? Maybe you have something nice to say to Alex? What would he say? Okay. To you. Bruh. You like Whoa! those? Yeah. What are they? I got it. All right, now let's take a moment to praise God for his word. Thank you, Jesus, for your word that brings us life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right, parable part one. Today we're going to talk about some of Jesus' titles that begin with V and W. So as we read this next verse, as I read this next verse to you, um, listen to the words that Jesus spoke in John 15 and focus on a V word. And it might have to do with some, welcome Sophia, it might have to do with something like this. Does anyone know what this is? Like tree. No, but good guess. We call it something different with a V. Today we're calling it something different with a V. Vegetarian, I don't know. Good guess, but it's a vine. Good guess though. How is that a vine? Here you go, it's a vine. Today we're calling this a vine. It's gonna be part of the lesson, all right. John 15, 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches. So basically it's saying we are the branches and Jesus is the vine. He that abideth in me, so a person who abideth in Jesus, it can be a man or a woman, it doesn't have to be a boy, even though it says he. And I in him, so basically God also abideth in us. The same bridges forth much fruit. So we bring it forth much proof when we abide in Jesus and he abides in us. For without me, ye can do nothing. So without God, we can't do nothing. We wouldn't even be alive today without Jesus, right? Because he gave you breath of life. All right, what V title did you hear? We just talked about it. What is this? No. What do you think it is? Myra, what do you think this is? It starts with a V. V, V. V. I think it's a jungle book. <laughs> there are a lot of them. V, V. Yes, exactly. Good job. Oh, and you get one of these. Welcome back. Here. I don't want to throw it at you because I don't want to hurt you. You want to go to the next? Do you want to go to the other one? <laughs> you want to talk to these ones, okay. two people? Yeah. Oh! Yeah. All right. Jesus describes himself as the vine. What are we in the relationship to him? Anybody remember? What are we? It starts with um, B. What's on the side of a tree? What's, what are these parts on a tree? No. This part right here. What? Brr, brr. Oh, what do you say? Yes, branch. We are the branches. All right. So I know this is a fake vine here, or some of you may not even think it's a vine. But pretend this is a real vine that's alive and growing, and that it's in a pot and it has water and soil. What would happen if I were to take a leaf off? Like I'm doing, doing so here. Will the branch die? No. I mean, it depends on what they take. All right, you guys are right. The branch won't die. Do you like Reese's or Smarties? Smarties? So, but what will happen to the leaf? Will the leaf die? Exactly what Beth agreed with. The leaf will die. Oh, sorry. Um... Why will this leaf die? Oh, can someone let Mark in, please? So why will the leaf die? Because it's not connected to the Exactly. Welcome, Mark. Woo, Mark! All right. So the leaf is going to die because it's not attached 
to where the nutrients and the water comes from, right? Probably. <laughs> All right. Uh, just give me a minute. Um, so Jesus is the vine. We must abide in him and he in us. If we want to live, grow, and produce fruit, just like this vine, if it was a live vine today. Welcome, Amaneki. Um, okay, next part. What does abide in mean? So what does it mean to abide in? Anyone have any guesses? What does it mean to abide in? It has to do with when I took this leaf off the branch. What does the leaf have to do to survive? Get water. No, what does it have to stay? What does it do when it's on this? What's the word for it? It starts with an A. Yes, it has to stay attached. <clears throat> so it also means remain attached to. So we have to stay remain. If we were the leaf, we'd have to stay rem remain attached to this uh, vine here. Because if we weren't attached to the vine, what would happen? We'd die if we don't stay attached to the vine. So just like you're supposed to, if you were a vine and you, I mean, if you were a leaf and you were part of a vine, you'd have to stay attached to a vine. But just in the same way, we need to stay attached to Jesus. Just like this leaf has to stay attached to the vine to survive. All right. Um, what good is a branch that has been pulled off from a vine? So what good is this leaf here? that has been pulled off from this vine. Is it any good? No. Yeah, it's not good. It's dead. There's no point to this leaf anymore. It's dead. Who would want a dead leaf, right? What if you get that good crunch, though? Like that good fall crunch? You eat leaves. Yeah, what? Can't you what? Can't you use the leaf? Like we use leaves that might have to compost. You could use it for compost, but you mainly, it can't produce fruit anymore, right? You can't get fruit. You can only get fruit from the vine, which the leaves have to be attached to the vine to produce fruit. But this leaf is pretty much dead, so it can't produce fruit anymore. Um, Jesus said, men gather these branches and burn them for firewood, John 15, 6. If I want to be a living branch as opposite to a dead firewood, because you wouldn't want to be a dead firewood, right? Because then you'd just be dead. You'd be pointless. The only thing you could, you'd have a short life if you were a dead firewood. Um, I must remain attached to Jesus. So we don't want to turn into a dead firewood. We got to stay attached to the vine. Jesus is the vine that we need to stay attached to. We can't let go of him. All right, next part. We can stay attached to Jesus even while he has gone away to prepare a special place for us. Now I'd like you to listen to this next verse I'm going to read to you guys, John 14 through two through four and my father's house are many mansions if it were not so i would have told you i go to prepare a place for you and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again and receive you unto myself that where i am there ye may be also so where jesus is we will be also jesus always watches us no matter where we are he's an omniscient god which means he's everywhere at once and whither I go, ye know, and way ye know. All right. Jesus said we know the way, the place he is preparing for us. But you know what? Some of you may con be confused by this verse, but you know what? A disciple, Thomas, was confused by this verse also. So here, this next verse here is going to explain a bit of it. John 14, 5 through 6. Thomas said... It's unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou wouldst go, and how we know the way. Jesus say unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto me until the Father, but by me. We know how to get to heaven, the place Jesus has gone away to prepare for us, because we know him, 
Jesus is the way. So we need to know Jesus. We need to read our Bible every day. We need to pray. We need to learn how to gain a relationship with him. How many times a day do you pray? I try and pray like maybe three times two, or two times at the least. All right. Listen for a W title of Jesus found in John 1.1, 1, 1, emphasizing the word would. <laughs> Sorry. All right, John 1.1, 1, 1, who would like to read? Emneki. John says, my in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Thank you. All right. What W title did you hear? Word. Word. Yes. Can you give that a candy to Beth? Word. Sophia, can you give a candy to Beth for that? Yeah. All right. God spoke the world into existence. He is the word. Can you see words that are spoken? Can anyone see words that are spoken? Can you see words that are spoken? Like when I'm speaking words to you right now, can you see, like, if I say A, B, C, D, F, G, you can't physically see it, right? After a couple of drugs, maybe. I mean, I, you can't really ever see the words because they don't physically, like, you can't see me. You can see I'm talking, but words are a sound. It's not something you can see. All right, let's read John 1, 14. Volunteer. Anyone want to read? Emanaki? So oh, sorry. John chapter 1, verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, and the glory as the begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thank you, Emanaki. All right. The world was made flesh. what? Flesh. Yes. Flesh. Can you give a, another one of those candies to Beth? So what is flesh? Everybody should know this pretty much, what flesh is. Okay. Anyone know? Body. Yes, it's human body. Oh, sorry. Okay, can you see a human body? Yeah, yeah it's kind of obvious that you can see one because we kind of all see our own human bodies and other people's human bodies in the room right now. Oh, sorry. So Jesus is the world, made flesh. He made the world visible. Okay, prayer. Earlier we talked about Jesus beginning, being the vine. It's important to stay attached to him because, you know, if this leaf doesn't stay attached to this vine here, what's going to happen to it? You're going to die. Yeah, so we need to stay attached to Jesus, just like this leaf here needs to stay attached to the vine. Everyone got that? All right. Um, it is important to stay attached to him so that we can continue to grow into who he created us to be. So in the Bible, it talks about God always has a plan for you, even ever since you were in your mother's room, and even before then. God has always had a plan for you and your life. Um, what? Are, how do we stay attached to Jesus? Yeah. What else? Reading. Yeah. Also, another way is studying your Bible. Studying your Bible is very important. So how you do that is you pick up your Bible and you maybe pick up a highlighter, a notepad, and like first you start off with like highlighting the verse you're going to read for the day. And then if you have any questions about it, you write down the questions. And then you ask somebody who may know your answer to your questions, like me or Sophia. And then you write, who was a part of this? Who helped? Who writ wrote this verse? Uh, who w spoke these words? Or you, and then you write where, where was it? When what? And then you write when was the time period? Like, what kind of time was it before Jesus came to the world? Was it after or whatever? And then you also study it by you'd be like, okay, what do I understand from this verse? And you write it down so you know. And after you've done all that, you write down the verse on a little notepad because when you write things down, you remember them easier. Or you, you can even 
draw a little picture of what it makes you think of, like, maybe uh, you read about the fruit of the Spirit, and you draw a fruit it reminds you of, or you draw a picture that reminds you of, like, joy. Maybe you have a picture of something, someone getting something as a joy, or when you, if you look into the Bible and learn about the Holy Spirit, maybe you draw a picture of, like, a gift, because it's kind of like a gift to you from God. So that's some things you can do to help you study. All right, let's pray right now and ask Jesus to help us stay attached to him always. All right, can everyone get up? You can pause the video while we do this part. All right, let's pray. Jesus, help us stay attached to you. You know that right now is the most important time for us to stay attached to you because we know the end times are coming and that we need you more and more right now. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, last thing before we get in the game. Plus, this week, take some time to think about Jesus' titles and adjectives that begin with the letters V and W. And you can use the Bible to look those up at, during your studying time when you study the Bible.